back for another review of Sisters on BET. Let's just jump right into it. Ain't gonna be no episode epi ain't what? Ain't gonna be no episode 18, only 19. I'm too far behind. Um I'm sure there's there's dozens of other people on YouTube who have reviewed it. Um yeah. So I've, and I've also picked up um Ruthless because I like that show and they're on season two. So I'm gonna pick that one up also. So I'll be doing sisters and I'll be doing ruthless. I won't be doing the oval because I ain't got that many words to say, but, um, yeah, let's just jump right into it. So, um, the, the naked dude from the last episode, he comes walking out of Calvin's room and, you know, he a little geeked up. He, but he's also butt ass naked and Maurice is getting an eyeful, you know, Maurice is out of control and he just tells me, you know, you ain't got no clothes on, don't worry about it. Basically. Um, the naked dude's name is Q and he is sky high, but he said he is not on weed. And Maurice says, okay, well, let me check your teeth <laughs> because are you on meth? Like, what, what are you, what are you actually on? And, um, yeah, so the dude says that he's a stripper and, um, he says that whoever is in Calvin's room, cause I, I don't know if it was Calvin or not. I'm not really sure it's given, like, it ain't really Calvin to me, but, um, let's just go with the storyline. It says, he says that whoever's, whoever's in that room, which will soon be Calvin is, is a formidable opponent and they are on round four of whatever they've been doing. All right. So yeah, and he, he just thirsty and he just needs something to drink. He can't take it. Um, Andy, Andy's at home and she gets more flowers at the door and it's the, uh, the young doorman, from last time who came and got the flowers less out of her house last time and um she tells him you know take the take the flowers away and she tells he tells her if you don't want the flowers just take take the man's name who delivered the flowers take take Gary off the, the list he can't deliver flowers if he ain't on the list um and of course she's still giving him grief she got an attitude um about she don't really want nobody to say shit about Gary at this point because she knows she's about to get back with him so child just don't talk to her about it just let let it be um, so, but, but in the, in, in, in that moment, I guess she kind of realizes that she's on her own, but, um, you know, cause she's kind of isolated everyone just cause she wants to be with Gary. That's, that's all she wants. That's who she wants to be with. Um, so she realized she, she has, everybody's pretty much left her alone at this point, except Gary. So she's, she got the ring on and she's twirling around and having a good old time. And, um, she puts the ring on and it's stuck. She didn't try butter. She didn't try, um, which appears to be Dr. Bronner's. I know, I know that bottle. That was a Dr. Bronner's something or another. Castile soap or some some form of his soap. Um, she put. She tried to put that on there. Um, she tried calling the ring company and to tell her, "No, ma'am, you can't take that ring off. That particular ring comes with the key, and only your spouse's ring is your spouse's ring is basically the key to unlock your ring. So you can't take it off, which is why the name of the ring is called Forever Ring." Okay, wonderful. Um, so <laughs> not really. This is giving very much dog collar. It's giving very much um what in the what in the fuck is going on. Um so yeah, Gary has um purchased her ring that she is locked into. Literally, quite literally. The ring has some sort of technology where it expands or most to your finger and you can't take it off until your spouse basically grants you permission to do so. Yeah, okay. Um, so Gary at this point has inadvertently l locked her down, um, which could be a sign of foreshadowing or a cautionary tale yet again, but with well, Andy, who, who goddamn knows at this point? Moving right along. Zach and Fatima are, you know, getting in early, getting their early morning fix on, and they're just chatting, and he, he realizes that he fits with her, you know, they compliment each other pretty well for the most part and she uh expresses that she's never felt the way she currently feels about anyone and he's wondering you know are they getting too serious too soon so they're they're chatting about that dynamic and Fatima says that she um she's she ain't in love just yet but she you know she's feeling a little bit different about about Zach at this point so it's getting a little bit serious um you know, things are picking up, which, all right, that's cool, but we're going to have to figure out this court case before we get any more entangled for Timo. I mean, because, all right, like, how, 
I need to know, like, how did Hayward or what if his name is Squib- whatever his name is, how did he get Zach out of jail? Off of drug trafficking <sighs> charges. An embezzlement? I don't know. What, what's the crime when, when you steal money? Theft. Theft and embezzlement charges because carrying the person charges and then they found the drugs. So you got two federal pending charges. How you? How they got him out? I want to know. Did they just buy him out? Or are we done with that? I wasn't sure. Maybe I missed that part. Alright, moving right along. So Karen tells the girls about Andy because um, she's worried about her trying to figure out what to do next. And Danny is just mute at this point. She's listening, but she's not actively engaged. And we know this is not normal for Danny because Danny always has something to say. And um, she tells him, like, I was trying to say the same thing at the bank, but nobody was listening. So keep going, girl, because you're saying everything I was I, I was trying to say. And um, so she also tells him, you know, just <laughs> leave her alone. Let her do what she want to do with Gary. And, you know, we'll be here to pick up the pieces as usual. But... Just, just, just let it be. And, you know, they agree and let her, you know, they're going to let her figure it out, which my sentiments exactly. She grown at this point. If she want to figure it out with Gary, that's her prerogative. Sis, if you get bopped beside the head in the meantime, then wear, wear that bandaid with pride, girl. Ain't nothing we can do at this point. You're grown, right? Okay, so at the bank, Jacoby makes, um, some sort of feeble attempt to apologize to Maurice, but he also keeps doing it with this air of sarca- sarcasm. He, he keeps saying, hey, bitch, hey, bitch. Like, basically he's trying to overly use, like, the um the, the gay lingo. So it was the half-assed attempt at an apology. I guess he learned something about Maurice from um Sabrina, and he's making an attempt to apologize. It's definitely thinly veiled in mockery, but... Chad John apologize. All right, cool. Um, and so he he walks away, and Mari's talk is talking to Sabrina, and he thinks that Sabrina and Jacoby um has sex the night prior because they're avoiding each other. It's getting it's very weird now, even though they only went out for drinks. She denies it. She denies it because <laughs> because for one, she's still she's still not over Calvin, and for two, she says that the. nether region is too massive that it is too large for her to conquer if that makes sense um yeah so so that that is what she said which is i guess would have been her only hang up from having sex with him that just seemed to be what i took from that all right cool whatever um Mars tells her, you know, it's okay, you know, maybe you can explore Jacoby because Calvin has moved on. Don't even worry about Calvin. Y'all cool, y'all good, because Calvin has moved on and he had a date last night. I thought it was with a woman. It was not. It was with Mr. Naked Man Q. And, um, you know, so so don't even worry about it. So Calvin has spilled the tea about the Naked, naked Man Q that was in the house, in the kitchen, in the whatever in Calvin's guts, wherever he happened to have been the night prior. So, um, she in her bag and she calls Calvin leaves some, uh, a, a, a nasty voicemail, you know, just calling all types of names, doing all these other things, blah, 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 girl, let it go. Moving right along. So Danny, um, calls Ken and tells her, you know, like Zach, Zach went to jail because of you, you know, you, and, um, I just want you to be certain that he really did it before, you know, you continue on down this road and whatever, whatever. Of course, Karen don't care. Um, but what she does care about is the fact that Danny told her, oh yeah, he went to jail, but he's, he's out now, he's at work. And she wants to know, well, hell, who bailed him out? And that's at 10, Danny tells her, you know, it's probably his new little girl, girlfriend or whatever. And, you know, so now Karen is back on the bitter train just saying, um, yeah, well, I hope she'll take care of him for as long as I take care of him. Good for them, blah, blah, blah. Girl, 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 whatever. Whatever, child. All right. Moving right along. Calvin storms into the bank and uh, Mars wants to know how he's, how it's even humanly possible for him to be able to sit down after his, um, four, four plus rounds from the night prior with Mr. Naked Man Q. And Calvin is utterly confused, which, which further tells me like, okay, it's not what we think it is, but the optics, the optics is still not giving me confusion because 
said he was a stripper. He said he was on something other than weed and he's real sweaty and hot and out of this world. Um, he was also there until the next morning. So I don't know if you rented out your rented room, Calvin, to someone else because Q wasn't, he didn't even know your name. Mr. Naked Man Q didn't know that was your name. Didn't know Calvin's name when him and Maurice were speaking. So maybe it wasn't Calvin. Maybe Calvin let somebody borrow his room and he stayed somewhere else the night prior and that is what happened. It's possible. Let's go with it. Um, so, you know, while he's confused and, you know, I guess it's about to further explain, Sabrina walks in and so they're going back and forth. And da 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 All he had to do is tell me the truth. He was gay. Blah, blah, blah. da 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 and then he tells her, you know, lose my number. Don't worry about calling me no more. And she loses it instantly. No, his number. Like, she she goes into her phone and deletes it and all this good stuff. Now, I ain't got no iPhone, but I'm sure there's a way to retrieve it if you really want it. But we'll pretend you got rid of it for the, for the review's sake, right? Okay. All right, so Andy um calls Gary and tells him, you know, I can't get this ring off. <laughs> and so now they got to meet up in order for him to help her get the ring off. Cool. And now he has some glimmer of hope that, you know, first of all, sir, wasn't your train supposed to leave the next day? Why are you still in town? It just hit me. Why are you still here? Anyway, um, so now he has this glimmer of hope that she's going to accept the proposal because she tried the ring on. And he is operating under this assumption, like, I didn't know you were going to find out that, you know, it, it it's not going to come off because it's a forever diamond because I, I assumed you weren't going to put it on until I put it on you. But, sir, you left the ring at her house, so... I'm not saying you would have known she was going to try it on, but why were you, why were you going to leave it if you, you, you didn't want her to put it on? I'm confused. I'm confused, y'all. I don't know. Anyway, um, so now they got to meet up to get the ring off. So she's waiting for him in the parking garage. I'm assuming at her job seems to be the last parking garage he popped down on her at. So she's at work, but she don't want to go in with the ring on. Because why? That's going to start the whole snowball of people judging you, telling you that you're a fucking idiot, um, and just getting all back in your business, child. So she can't go to work with the ring on. So she's waiting on Gary to meet her in the parking garage to take the ring off so she can go on about her work day. However, out of the shadows pops Jasmine and two of her friends. And they about to jump Andy. So that concludes episode 19 of season 2 of Sisters on BET. And um, this one was, was, was eh, it's kind of lackluster. Um, I'm sure it's going to pick up because Andy's going to get jumped. And she's still going to ride or die. But Gary, um, Sabrina, child, girl, whatever. Karen, drop them charges. Zach, Zach did not steal your money. And if it's $5,000, girl, you act like you got so much money, just, just charge it to the game, call it a loss, call it a wash, and let's just let it go. Um, Yeah, so that is it for my review. Let me know what you think. Like, comment, share, subscribe, whatever you feel like doing. And I will see y'all in the next one. Peace.